Hello, today is Thursday, April 23rd. Let me tell you something encouraging. You can fall helplessly into righteousness. You may say, that doesn't sound encouraging. That sounds helpless. Exactly. That's the only way you can truly receive the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus, because he is our helper. Jehovah Sidkenu, the Lord, our righteousness. And so today, Giles Polly, one of my prayer partners, is going to share this with you. Giles is on the Pastors Advisory Council of Freedom. He works for Microsoft, where he's a technical lead. His wife, Deb, is a professor at Southwestern Assemblies of God University. Incredible couple. They're involved in our Freedom small groups. I love them, and I love Giles. And today, he's going to take you into the Word about Jehovah's Sid Canoe. I want to remind you, this Friday night at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, Shelly and I will be offering another miracle night. It's going to be great. So if you need a miracle or you know someone who needs a miracle in any area of their life, tune in. 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, Friday night. Don't want to miss it. That's tomorrow night. So Giles, talk to us about Jehovah's Sid Canoe and falling helplessly into righteousness. Good morning, Freedom Family. I'm so glad you guys can join me as we talk about Jehovah Sidkenu, the Lord, our righteousness. Maybe you are like King David. You have lost all confidence in your own strength. You are convinced that there's just nothing left that's good in you. You realize all you have to offer him are your struggles and your failures. One of the things you may not know about my story is that I'm actually divorced. You know, there's nothing that either one of us had planned on not necessarily anything either of us wanted, but it's a situation that I found myself in. And during that separation, I felt like there was nothing I could do to make it work. You know, during this time, is about the same time Fireproof was coming out on a DVD, there's a Fireproof devotional, so I thought, perfect, this will do it. And I did that everything I could in the natural to see my circumstances change, but it just didn't matter. And at the end of these months, and months that it kind of dragged on, I felt like a failure. And that failure was so pervasive that it started to feel like I was a failure in every aspect of my life. Not only did I feel like I was a failure in my marriage, I felt like I was a failure in my career, to my friends, just in life in general, I was a failure. And I began to own that identity. And it got to that point where I didn't even want to go to church. I isolated myself from, from my spiritual family because I was so afraid of allowing them to see me as a failure. And even more so, I was afraid that they would agree, that they would call me and see me as a failure. But it was towards the end of some of those long months that I finally recognized I need them and I need a change in my life because what I'm doing isn't working. So I came to church one Sunday morning. I made sure I stayed in my car for the first few minutes of worship and I snuck into the back. I wanted to make sure that the lights were down, there was already worship playing, I didn't want anyone to see me. And then in about a few minutes while the pastor was wrapping up, I made my great exit. I didn't want to have to stay after service and talk to people. I didn't want people to ask me how things were going. I didn't want people to see me as a failure. But then that following day, that Monday, I felt prompted and I felt God telling me that I needed to go to Monday night prayer. And that's when it finally really truly hit me. It wasn't just that, that moment that opened the doors and someone said, hey, Giles. No, it was the moment between two rows of cha chairs with me crying. And then when I say crying, I don't mean I was crying. I was disgusting. It was an ugly cry. It was the kind where you're just tears pouring down your cheeks. You're kind of snoring a little bit. There's some mucus maybe in there. You're not really sure. You just know that you're a complete mess and disaster but it didn't matter. It was in that moment that I understood God didn't want anything but me. He didn't want anything but my brokenness. And whether my marriage was saved or not, not only could I, I had to fall helplessly into the righteousness of God and allow him to work. Maybe you've arrived at a place where you are turning everything over into the Lord's hands and you do trust him. You know, God doesn't God doesn't want your home or your car, your furniture, your possessions. All he wants is you and your faith, your strong belief in his word. You may be tempted to look around at other people and think, oh, they're more spiritual than I am. 
that person may also be struggling and they're just trying to keep up an appearance of righteousness. But just remember, as God looks at you, he declares, there is a righteous man or woman. <laughs> Why? Because you have admitted you're helpless and you have trusted in Jehovah Zekitnu as the giver of all righteousness. Romans 4, 22 through 24 says this, this is why it was credited to him as righteousness. The words it was credited to him were not written for him alone, but also for us to whom God will credit righteousness. For us who believe in him who raised Jesus, our Lord from the dead, that us is you and me. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for this time that we can enter into your presence. I thank you that you are a good Father and that you come and we can lay our helplessness before your feet. And in that moment, you will plant us in your goodness and in your perfect righteousness, Lord. I declare your acceptance over every one of us, Father God, every member of the Freedom Family, everyone who may see this video, Father God. I declare acceptance over their life from you as their Father, Lord. And we replace that self-condemnation with your love, your righteousness, and we declare that you not only want them, you love them, and you are on their side, Father. Thank you. Y'all have a great day.